Well, good morning, everyone. Morning. Happy Easter. Yeah. That wasn't very good, was it? I think some of them are maybe still asleep. Okay, let's try again and wake them up. Okay. Happy Easter. Thank you. A bit better. Now, um, happy Easter, Emma. And you, Paul. Very good. We have a going to have a fun start in a minute, aren't we? Yes. We it's are. Be great. We're going to explain that in a second, yep. so people can relax and not panic uh, until Emma leaves the stage, and I'll be left by myself. <laughs> um, but first thing, we had a lovely sunrise service, oh. and the amazing thing was, we saw the sun. Hey. Hey. And uh, there were 30 people, and uh, it was quite moving. And although we catered for 20, when I say we, it was Laura and Rachel, although we catered for 20 bacon baps, 30 people turned up, and everybody had a bap. Amazing. Amazing. Biblical. Biblical, (laughs) apart from the bacon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Okay, should we explain what's going to happen? Let's. What's going to happen, Emma? So, what's going to happen is, in a moment, I'm going to ask all of the children, so kind of primary school age, if you're littler than primary school age, please bring a grown-up, to follow me to the doors. You're going to get an instrument or a ribbon each, and then we're going to go outside, and we're going to come back in, in a moment, through those doors there, and we're going to shake our instruments and wave our ribbons and have a party. That is what the children are doing. It is. What are the grown-ups doing, Paul? The grown-ups are thinking, it'll be quiet for about a minute or two. Yeah. And then what's going to happen is, um, at the proper moment, uh, as the children are going out, yes. Luke is going to read a passage from Luke. So good, that. Beautiful. Beautiful. And when he's finished, I'll give the nod to Nick at the back there, who's going to let you know that we're ready. Yeah. Then you're going to bash Knock the Knock on the door. Bash. With my mallet. Bash. Great. With my mallet. That's the bit. And then uh, I say, who's there? Yeah. Then somebody, one of the children. Susanna. Susanna reads something. <laughs> the doors are flown wide open. Yeah. And you come in. Yeah. Then we will together say, can you put the slide up, Josh, please, uh, of the, uh, he... I will say, he is risen, and you say... He is risen indeed. Okay, let's, let's just have a bit more of a go, okay. shall we? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Oh, very good. I'm sure when we do it in live time... You'll we'll be, be feeling it. be feeling it. Yeah. We're feeling it. Okay. And today, unusual, but I'm going to do it. Okay. I'm it's ready. somebody's today, 16th wedding anniversary. Aww. Oh, yeah. It's Nick and Ruth Heaviside. Aww. Aww. Congratulations, mate. And Ruth. So I didn't see Ruth. At and this morning we have da, 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 yeah. the youth drummers. And they sounded fantastic in rehearsal, I have to say. Fantastic. So we look forward to that. Absolutely. So here we go then. Are we going? We're going. Okay, children. children follow Emma. Follow me. That doesn't mean run ahead of me. And now this is going to go off. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Some adults want some fun. You can follow them around and come back in again. (laughs) Okay. But very early on, oh, I've been told to stop. Stop. We're going to uh, do what we did on Good Friday. We're going to turn not all the lights off because that was too dangerous. We're going to turn a number of lights off. And as the lights go off, Luke will read. The lights will come back on again when the children come in. So don't don't panic. Um, So begin the reading and we'll turn the lights off. Will you be able to see? It's a very good question. Really is. You got a torch. Good. Anybody else got anything they'd like to bring up here to share with us? Here we go. Excellent. Now, you're young enough. Can you see with that, do you think? Just about. Wonderful. Right. Let's have the lights off, please.
I'm going to start now. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman went to the tomb, taking the spices they had prepared. They found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. So they went in, but they didn't find the body of the Lord Jesus. As they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them, clothed in dazzling robes. The woman were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. Then the men asked, Why are you looking among the dead for someone who is alive? He isn't here. He is risen from the dead. Remember what he told you back in Galilee, that the Son of Man must be portrayed into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and that he would rise again on the third day. Then they remembered that he had said this. So they rushed back to the tomb, uh, back from the tomb, sorry, to tell his 11 disciples and everyone else what had happened. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and several other women who told the apostles what happened. But the story sounded like nonsense to the men, so they didn't believe it. However, Peter jumped up and ran to the tomb to look. Stooping, he peered in and saw the empty linen wrappings. Then he went home again, wondering what had happened. Okay, Nick, thank you. Who's there? Lift up your heads, O gates, and be exalted, you everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Hey, open the doors. Come on, then. Okay. Hey. <laughs> Next slide, please, Josh. Oh, it's dark. Thank you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. If you're able, would you like to stand and join us? If you if you're able, would you like to stand and join us? Uh, this first song today is very lively and hopefully it will remind some of you here of Sunday school back in the day, basically. <laughs> This is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in it, and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day.
fantastic, wonderful. Thank you. And now I believe there's a child willing to come and pray. Oh, there's a notice, apology, yes. Um, uh, next Sunday, uh, there's a uh, normal service, back to normal, quarter to 11 here. Uh, as we enter April and we begin a couple of talks on resurrection stories. So looking forward to that. Uh, next week, we'll also have the 11-month management accounts available because the church meeting is two weeks uh, Sunday, uh, church business meeting, the finance meeting. Uh, so 12.30 or ish after the morning service on the 14th of April. I think that is everything of the notices. Oh, afterwards, sorry, no, no, afterwards, there's a mingle. Uh, we got an Easter mingle dingle. And uh, there's some lots of other things. Jane's father, again, has made a cake. And uh, it's a lovely cake, so we look forward to that. Other people have contributed towards it. And uh, we look forward to tasting it all. So, Emma, thank you. Brilliant. Betsy is going to come and lead us in a prayer. Fantastic. So, let's, let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for for Easter Day. Thank you for bringing hope to our lives because of Jesus who died and rose again. Please come close to us this morning. Help us to receive the gift of life that starts now and lasts forever. Thank you for loving us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Betsy. Okay, if you've been to an all-age service at Glenwood before, you know that I like us to play a game together. Now, these games are voluntary, so don't panic, no one has to leave. Today, um, we have a game, and it's going to be a joke-telling game. Rachel's really pleased. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, un right, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, and then we're going to do it. In this room, under 10 seats, kind of blue tacked under the front of the seats, there are t halves of jokes, okay? So there's like the question half and an answer half. If you have a joke under your chair, you have two choices. You can either bring it to the front and read it out, or you can wave it in the air and somebody who would like to bring it to the front and read it out will take it from you and read it. Does that make sense? The jokes are colour-coded, so we should know who has the first half and the second half of which joke. It's going to work perfectly. Okay, so have a look under your chairs. If there are empty chairs nearby you, you might need to check under those as well. Please find them because I cannot remember where I put them. <laughs> no one was here back then. They are all kind of at the front. So if you find one and you want to read it out, bring it. Brilliant. If you find one and you don't want to read it out, give it a wave in the air um, and someone will come and read it. Brilliant. Right, you've got a pink one, so we need the other half of the pink one. If you stand face that way, what colour is yours? purpley okay stand facing the people brilliant we found two this is not brilliant so far <laughs> oh we've got another one we're just finding someone who wants to read it i think if there's someone that wants to read i think there's one over here that yes there we go benjamin wonderful sally's coming to read hers amazing what color is it brilliant so you're with seb there you go. So one of you should have the question and one wonderful. Okay, we have a whole joke. Where are the rest? Come on, people. You're on your own. <laughs> wonderful. Huh. Okay. Can we really not find any more jokes? They're definitely there. They're like here, blue tacked. There's nothing along this row. Oh, guys. I was so sure this was going to work beautifully. There was definitely one somewhere around here. Did you find the one that was somewhere around here? They're, all, they're like at the edge of the chairs. Like the front edge. They are underneath. Like here. You definitely haven't got any. 
Oh, I wish I could just remember them. Um, oh, we found one. Well done. <laughs> it doesn't match any. Oh, we could. We've got a match here. No, still no matches. We need a pink or a green. Don't oh, Emma me. They're out there, Paul. <laughs> No. Okay, I'll see if I can remember. Have blue tack and no blue tack and no joke. Interesting. Right. Okay. We've got a whole joke here. I can remember the end of that one. You've got a whole joke. And I can remember the end of that one. Okay. Everything is fine. You can remember the end of jokes as well. Brilliant. Okay. Who's got the first bit? So, are you ready? Sell it for me, Jackson. Okay. What kind of jewellery does the Easter Bunny wear? I don't know. What kind of jewellery does the Easter Bunny wear? 24 carat gold. Well done. Okay. You're going to do the beginning and I'll do the end. Did you hear the story of when the Easter Bunny sat on a bee? No, I never heard the story of when the Easter Bunny sat on a bee. It's a tender tale. <laughs> Okay, you two are a group. Okay. Why did the Easter egg hide? He was a little chicken. He was a little chicken now. Okay. Look, this is my favourite, so I'm glad we found the beginning of this one. Okay. What do you call ten rabbits marching backwards? A receding hairline. It's <laughs> good. Well done, everybody. I'm going to go round later and find the rest of those jokes, and I'll know. <laughs> Here we go. Having done games like that at uh, Christmas, and they've gone wrong, I'm so thankful this morning. My enjoyment is, I won't contain it, because that's what happens to me. <laughs> that's great. Good. Well, now we're going to just hear, uh, I thought I'd ask somebody uh, in the congregation, what does Easter mean to them? So Adele, would you like to, to come? That'd be great to meet Adele. She's been coming to Glenwood for a few years now. And um, we're going to share microphones, if that's okay, which is dangerous because I won't be able to get it back, but there we go. Um, so first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, so my name's Adele. Um, I've been in Cardiff for like 20 years now. Um, my family are originally from South Africa, and all my family are here. Um, I am a mum to uh, my son. He's five. Mm. I um, work in a school and um, in Springwood, actually. So I know quite a few people work in Springwood here as well. And I am um, going back to uni in September. I'm doing my teacher training, which is exciting. Um, that's about me in a nutshell, I think. So you're going to be a primary school teacher? Yeah, that's the plan. I've worked in schools for years, um, on and off. I tried a few different things, as you do. But um, I've always gone back to working in schools. I do enjoy it. So, yeah. yeah. Well, my wife was a teacher. Yes. And I do know that you've got to enjoy teaching. Otherwise, yes, it'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Kills you anyway, but... You know, you go, you go down a bit more happy than somebody who'd enjoy it. Uh, tell us a little bit about your faith story, or your faith journey, I should say, sorry. Um, so, um, I grew up in a Christian family. All my family are Christian. We've always gone to church in South Africa. My dad is old apostolic, so he was in the old apostolic church. So, I always knew about God. I always knew about faith. But I think as I got older, um, I was a bit rebellious, I guess. So, I um, lost my way, really, I'd say, and... Um, you know, just didn't really go to God first. And to be honest, I don't think I really understood God. Even though I was brought up in church, I really didn't know him the way I do now. Um, so, you know, when you go through a lot of things and a lot of changes and uncomfortable situations, I think I drew further away from him. Um, but, you know, probably in 2022, I knew I didn't want to keep feeling these feelings of just negativity um, inside me and you know so I came to church and um, decided to get baptized and then I thought that was it like oh I'm baptized now I'm part of God's church you know I mean he's family now but actually I think that's when the work starts that's when the real work starts walking in faith with them it's not an easy journey but you know I've had so much support I've volunteered in the youth club and um, got to learn, you know, watch um, our youth learn about God the same time I am as well, which has been fantastic because um, 
I did spiritual um, counseling with Susan. So that was wonderful. So I've had real support. My son's here. So my faith journey is just, it's, it's been wonderful. It's given me like a sense of peace and forgiveness as well and understanding of situations. I look at it completely different because of God. Um, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That was great. And uh, what does Easter mean to you? It's, you know, so many things, it's hard to pinpoint one, but I think it's just um, his love. It's, it's, it's so hard to imagine that he loves us this much. I, it, it's unbelievable that he cares so deeply for each and every one of us. He knows us. It's an invitation to come to him. His love is just, it's never ending, and it's a peace that's just inexplainable. So it stirs just for me about love and hope and um you know, God's love for us. Well, that's wonderful, Adele. And uh, I'm sure many people would uh, resonate with all that. And you are delighted to be in the church. And I know that Laura really appreciates you in the youth work. And uh, next year you'll be drumming as well. Uh, yeah. Why not? Yeah. So uh, thank you. Let's give a round of applause. Thank you. Stand with us. <laughs> yeah, they can have instruments if you like.
John 20, 24 to 31. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the 12, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hands into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hands and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Mm. Are you coming back, Laura? Is that it? Is that it? All oh, right, come back in. Let's give him a round of applause then. <laughs> and who said you could leave the service? <laughs> Let's pray before Emma comes and uh, shares with us. Father, I confess I would have been Thomas and wouldn't have needed to see the hands and the side. And I thank you for your grace and your patience with us. And I thank you that in heaven, there's a king of love has sat upon the throne. And I thank you for your grace, and I thank you for your mercy, and we thank you for the wonderful hope that came with the resurrection, that death was defeated. We thank you that evil was beginning to be dismantled through the power of the cross. And Lord, as we gather this Easter Sunday, we are just conscious of so much around our world where there's little hope and there's no peace and there's wars and there's famine and there's division and there's slaughters. And Father, I pray on this Resurrection Sunday, we lift up the Ukraine and Russia and Gaza and Israel and uh, Nigeria and Afghanistan, Father, and uh, Burkina Faso, all these places where there are conflicts and difficulties. And Come, Holy Spirit, may justice and mercy and peace come, we pray. Be with those who follow you, hiding in rubble for their homes. May they know your courage, I pray. May they glimpse an inkling of hope at the resurrection. Please be with them, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. Okay, children, I wonder if you could come and sit at the front down here for me so I can look at your friendly faces. I always say this, the grown-ups behind you are scary, so if you can sit on the floor by here, then I know that I've got some friends um, that I can talk to. <laughs> Thanks for being my friend. Okay. Thank you, thank you. You're all wonderful. <laughs> oh, that's better. Oh, that's much better. So, oh, there's more coming. Wonderful. Okay. 
fabulous. Do you know, it took me a really long time to decide what to do this morning. At first, I thought I might... dress up as the Easter Bunny. And I thought that I would tell you all about the sweetest gift at Easter time, even sweeter than a ginormous chocolate egg filled with cream and caramel. The sweetest gift of Easter, the sweetest gift of all, is the hope that we have of abundant life starting now and going on forever because of what Jesus did at Easter time. (laughs) But I thought that was a bit silly, actually. So I decided not to do that. Oh, but then I thought I might get this tent and pretend that it's a tomb. Yeah, and I thought I would get inside, um, get inside, and then I would disappear, and I would tell you all about how when Jesus' friends came to find him on Easter morning, he wasn't there in the tomb anymore, because death couldn't hold on to him. By dying on the cross and then coming back to life again, Jesus defeated death, and now... Death can't hold on to anyone who has put their trust in Jesus either. But then I remembered, I don't know how to disappear. And then I kept getting stuck in my tent. So I decided not to do that. Oh, but then I thought, oh... I might oh, I forgot the youth would be up here. It's fine. Um, I thought I might paint a picture um, to show the joy that Easter has brought to my life. A picture that shows the difference um, that it makes to know that the Jesus, right, the Jesus who loved me so much that he would rather die than leave me on my own. That is the same Jesus who invites me to abundant life forever with him. A picture that shows the joy and the light and the hope of all of that Um, forever. But then... I remembered, um, oh, oh, no, it's wet. I don't really have the skills to put all that in a picture. So um, I decided not to do that. Um, silly idea, really. Oh. Then I ran out of ideas. And I got a bit scared because I really didn't want to be standing up here with all of you and all of them looking at me, not knowing what to do. This, this is what I didn't want to happen. So I did what I probably should have done right at the beginning. And I asked Jesus what he wanted me to do. Do you know what he said? Do you? You don't? Would you like me to tell you? You would? Okay. Jesus said, I don't have to do anything. There's nothing I can do that will make Jesus love me any more than he loves me already. His love for me is perfect. There's nothing I can do to bring all of you 
close to Jesus. There's nothing I can do to bring to you the joy and the hope or the incredible life-bringing wonder that is Easter. He has done it. It is finished. He has done it for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Would the band like to come back up? Thank you, Emma. That was that was fantastic. And uh, is this your painting? Is that your painting? In tribute. Well, it's very good. It is nice. Your painting. I promise you, if you put it in Tate Modern, somebody would give one thousand pounds for that. Um, we're just going to, in a second. Uh, um, to do a lovely thing. We're either going to just for, mingle around for a little bit, wishing each other happy Easter or the peace of Christ be with you. Um, it's a lovely thing to do. Now, if some of you sneak out before the last song, you're not allowed to take any of the nibbles. I know, boo, boo. Um, so, yeah, we're going to do that. And also, I wanted to say, I, I meant to say it earlier, actually, yesterday, Merrill organized a great pilgrimage walk to Brecon, and uh, we went up to the top of a hill, a thousand foot hill. What was it called? Penny Krieg. Penny Krieg. And it had a uh, triangle. What's it called? Trig point. That's what I was looking for. Trig point. And we all, there was 28 of us, we all gathered together. Meryl had written some wonderful prayers. And we were joined by a horse. A delightful horse came and stuck his head in the, the circle. And then we all turned around and faced outwards, all the way around to Wales, and we prayed the Lord's blessing on over Wales. And then we walked back down again to the cafe. And uh, so thank you, it was a great day. Uh, wonderful. Okay, why don't we just, uh, we've got time for five minutes, move around a little bit, offer the peace of Christ or say Happy Easter, and uh, I'll call you back in about five minutes.
Okay, I wonder if we could start making our way back to our seats. That'd be really helpful. Thank you. Don't nip out, Ruth. Please be seated. As we finish, just a couple of things as a good. First of all, uh, Mike and Josh, Josh was on visuals, Mike was on uh, sound today, and he was here at half past eight because there was a lot of setup uh, technically, and uh, there's a lot that could have gone wrong. Uh, but it's gone incredibly well, hasn't it? So why don't we give Mike and Josh a round of applause? And then if uh, something you've been here this morning and it's triggered some questions or you have questions and you want to meet to discuss the questions, we, we do run something called Treasure the Questions. And it's that. Uh, uh, a couple of us uh, gather 
uh, with people who ever want to come and we have some coffee, tea, what have you, and cakes. And then you just bring your questions, questions of life, questions of faith, questions of doubt. Uh, and we begin to, to engage in the conversation with you. And we don't have all the answers, so, you know, it's an ongoing conversation. But if you'd like to know more about that, sometimes it's just for one week, sometimes it's two, the most it's three. Uh, if you want to know more about that, either come see me or Rachel, who's at the back, well, in the middle there at the back. Uh, that'd be great. Fantastic. So that's it, I think. I think now we've got the wonderful treat of the mingle and some lovely Easter stuff to eat. Hope you have a wonderful uh, rest of the day and um, the Lord bless you and may continue to journey with you as you travel all your different ways and be with you continually. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. Thank you. Sorry, one last thing. Apologies. Some children ask, can they have some of these balloons? And you can, but the one who's going to get the balloon first is Tom Heaviside, because he wanted to have first choice. So where's Tom Heaviside? He's out there. Well, he's missed his chance. That's life, isn't it? Right.